This is my thoughts on Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 5. So, this episode is called The Pirate. Spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this episode. And make sure you watch... I'm going to put the links in the description box, but make sure you watch the video by Tyler Calvert and Jesse Gender on this episode. So... And I'm going to try to not just restate, you know, they both make excellent points. So, yeah, going to try not to restate anything that they said. And, yeah, Grief Karka notes, he shot first, which is, as we know, an important distinction in Star Wars. I really, I really love how... The pirates in this episode are legitimately just like pirates, you know, old, old-timey pirates here on Earth. I, I really love that. So, you know, when they're firing their cannons on Navarro, it actually, it looks just like a, a pirate ship firing the, the big, you know, yeah, those big cannons that, that they would have. And, uh, yeah, I, th I think I will just briefly bring up, there's also the, uh, let's see, uh, huh, I could have sworn I, th th there it is, yeah, yeah, uh, the, the, yeah, when the, uh, I, I can't remember his name, but the pirate captain when he wants to, you know, he, he goes up to move the, the ship. I think, is he, like, trying to crash the ship into some something? I, f I forget, but, you know, he goes up and they have this big wheel that he, like, turns just the way that you would. Those old, you know, wooden, you know, yeah. So, so that I, I really appreciated that. There's just, yeah. And I like how G68 very casually inserts herself into the, So, boss, I'm going to grab some food. Would you like some? I would love for him to be like, It's like 8 in the morning, but no, of course, you know, she thought of an excuse that would make sense. So, yeah. And she's like, well, I mean, I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm not... Not to be an a-hole here, but Navarro isn't actually part of the New Republic right now. So, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, and, you know, because of this, they, they don't get any, you know, they, they don't get any Republic help on Navarro this episode. And, yeah, the, like, the idea of, of the Mandalorians relocating to Navarro... Like, I, I didn't see this coming, but it's very clever to have, because, cause yeah, you know, they don't have a planet anymore. You know, what was it? You know, you may no longer have a planet, but you do now have a home, you know, because that is, like, and, and you know, Bo-Katan is going to go out and bring together the tribes, because, you know, what was the thing that Bo-Katan said? Why did the other Mandalorians leave? The the ones that she had with her. I mean, the, the ones under her command. They all became mercenaries and such because they felt like, well, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing here. We can't, you know. But if Bo Katan goes out to them and says, you know, we can, we we have a home now. We have a place that we can be. You know, we're accepted. A lot of them might come back. Maybe not all. But a lot of them, because the thing they were missing was a home, a place that felt like it had a future. And Navarro, like, you don't have to love everything about it, but there's a future there. Like, that's a that's a place you want to live, you know. So, yeah, very, very clever. I, I really do love how this episode is very focused on this sort of, you know, building the, the Mandalorian... Yeah, a... Bringing, bringing all the Mandalorians back together, the the kind of, you know, and and this thing of who exactly will rule, will it end up being, you know, maybe maybe it'll be a sort of partnership between Bo-Katan and the Armorer, 
you know, but but yeah, I, I really like that. I do still really love the, the early, you know, where it was very episodic, earlier seasons of the show, where it's very episodic and very much like, you know, Din Djarin goes to a place, there's a situation he has to take part in, he takes part in, he leaves next episode, rinse and, you know, com completely new, new place, new people, all this stuff. But I really appreciate that they have by now, you know, the, it's it's very focused now. We we didn't, it wasn't completely clear at the start of this season that it was going to be this focused. But everything is really coming together, and I really appreciate that. And I really like the detail that apparently when they're making a decision, the Mandalorians, like, basically, you know, the armor will ask, you know, who wants to speak? Someone will, will say, I, I have something to, you know, I want to speak. And she'll give them the hammer, and as long as they hold the hammer, that means this is their time to speak. You know, it's like, um, if you... You know, this is what, you know, in, in like, um, Congress and the Senate and such, you know, the, the person in charge will say, we recognize the, the you know, the representative from su such and such, and they get to speak, and they, you know, maybe get a certain amount of time, and then when, you know, yeah, certainly nobody is really allowed to interrupt. That's, so, so goes the rules. And that was also the the case here. Like nobody really interrupted. Like e even as they got like, like the, the what's what's that thing? I am cautious and will murmur to that effect. You know, some some of them were really like, okay, this is you know, but no one was like shouting down Din Djarin. And you know, Paz Vizsla waited until Din Djarin had said everything he wanted to say. And, and Paz Vizsla is not the most, like, when he gets, when he gets his mind on, when, when he has an idea, he want, he just, we, we've just recently seen that, you know, he rushes right in sometimes. So, yeah, but he waited, you know, these are the rules, and once the armor asks, does anyone else have something to say, you know, he comes up. I don't know why he felt the need to like he is he is legit in favor of it, but he very slowly like he doesn't start by saying Din is right. Here's why he just says you know oh well I mean there's this is a good reason not to do it this is a good reason not to do it and then eventually he's like we're Mandalorians let's do it you know but I appreciate the values I think he could have gotten there sooner but I guess it's for dramatic effect both for him and for the show. And as someone who, you know, I, I, I appreciate when we're supposed to just hate a certain character or group in a piece of fiction, as, as long as it's not, like, targeting real-life minorities and such. But I really appreciate when they put in the effort to make sure, you know, we, we, we see Navarro now that the pirates have taken over, and they're just being douchebags to everyone like at, at first i was going to say every living thing but even the droids that are like like although you know droids in star wars are you know really treated very badly but yeah throughout like they're treating everyone badly they're, it's not even like they're they're being kind of they're going over the line when someone makes a mistake no they you know there's that guy that they like trip up and like you know they're just they're basically being high school bullies high school bullies with guns you know so yeah and and i really like how the monk the kowaki and monkey lizard i think it's called you know even that like they're you know like trying to take shots at the the, the pirates are and yeah you know it, it's a good like i think it was ryan airy of, of screen crush that pointed out by looking at navarro's Koeki and monkey lizards, you can see how Navarro is doing, you know, back in the bad old days, you know, one of them was being fried on the, on like a rotisserie spit in front of its mother, who was in a cage, and now that things are good, they're living free and in, in the trees, and now that the pirates are in charge, they're being shot at, and the Koeki and monkey lizard actually helps, because, 
you know, we know that they're intelligent. They're not, like, just dumb animals or something. Like, certainly the one that, uh, I, I forget its name, but the one that worked for Jabba, you know, like him or hate him, I'm, I find him very annoying personally. He seems intelligent. He understands what Jabba is saying, you know. He's, he doesn't, he, you know, so, so yeah. The, the, you know, the monkey lizard is like, they're right over there, you know. And that's why you shouldn't shoot people. I'm kidding. There are many, many other reasons why you shouldn't. And the, yeah, I, I like the thing with, you know, the odds are, you know, they're, they're, they outnumber you 10 to 1. I like those odds. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's not really fair to the pirates. And super cool when the armor, you know, I... Can this can can it just be a thing? Like I think that is this only the second time we've seen her get into action herself. You know, it's super cool each time. Like the you know, and this she like tosses a hammer right at dudes ahead and just holy crap! And and the the guy who's been having fun shooting the 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 uh, the Mandalorians on the ground, you know, he turns his face just in time to get smacked with the yeah. That was. Awesome. Let's see. And yeah, and this time it was the droid who corrects Grief Karga that it's not magistrate but high magistrate. If I recall, last time it was the other way around. Nobody but himself would call him high magistrate. And I gotta say, for for a second, when 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 the armorer said, uh, you know, do you respect my station? Take off your helmet. Like for a second, I was like, okay. As soon as the helmet comes off, I didn't say Simon says, but no, it. She actually does intend to. You know, they are going to be working together. She wasn't tricking her. Not saying that the character would. I'm just saying it. Would, I don't know. I th think it would be kind of funny if if like. I, I, I've I always had a very difficult time taking seriously people who demand, like, respect is something you earn, it's not something you demand, in my opinion. Anyway, and, and to be clear, you know, certainly some of the time she does, you know, she does do the right thing. Anyway, and the, it's, yeah, the mythosaur is brought up again, and the, let's see... Yeah, you know, yeah, basically this time it is, you know, the armor is basically ready now to accept, you know, that, that no, she, Bo-Katan really did see a mythosaur, and, you know, the armor, everything is, you know, she, she, um, she reads religion into, or she reads everything through the, the, the the bias and the the uh, what's it called yeah you know everything is is a religious you know thing to her so it must be a sign that the the you know I mean I can't help but think well yeah there there was a mythosaur there the armor sent someone to go there it woke up the mythosaur but whatever you know that's that's where they're going with it, and yeah, so Bo-Katan is going to unite and retake, and they will retake Mandalore, and then, you know, they're the end, you know, Moff Gideon flew out of the cupboard, and uh, yeah, it's, it's this thing of, did the Mandalorians actually take, you know, were, were they the ones that got Moff, Moff Gideon out of there or are they being framed because like everyone knows that Beskar is connected to Mandalorians but you know it's not impossible to get it without being a Mandalorian so so yeah I it's it's very very I I like that we don't know for sure because I mean I feel like the armor would be perfectly happy to have them, you know, to, to send Mandalorians to, to break Moff Gideon out. And, yeah, 
you know, they they want they want to handle him themselves. They aren't really looking to, you know, be on the yeah. And, yeah, I want to very briefly say, uh, I think it was, I, I, yeah, it was Jesse who pointed out, you know, it seems like this is building towards the sequel trilogy and eventually even past the sequel trilogy. And I do think that is, like, it's extremely important how they handle that because, like, I personally, I still love The Last Jedi and... I think there are good things about The Force Awakens and, like, say what you will about The Rise of Skywalker. It is a movie that exists. And, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's terrible. It's an absolutely terrible movie. Anyway, it's important how Disney handles the, the future because, let's be honest, as much as, like, the member berries are great and all, but they cannot keep telling stories that are set in the prequel area, era or, like, right around the time of the original trilogy. They have to move into the future, and that was one of the things they were trying to do with the, the sequel trilogy. So, yeah, it, it's probably... I can imagine they're going to retcon some stuff you know the the stuff that's very that the 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 stuff that's most unpopular they're probably going to retcon and yeah you know i i mean this is since the the release of the rise of skywalker we haven't gotten a single you know movie that from star wars and like you know, now, now it might seem like a distant memory, but like people were joking, I guess they're just going to put out a movie every year for the, for all of time, and that was basically the plan for a while, you know, and then several of them failed, including, you know, both Solo and Rise of Skywalker are considered failures, uh, you know, although I say, actually, I think, I think Rise of Skywalker was considered a box office success, but a critical failure and and like the failure with with regular audiences and solo i think they lost money on i i forget but certainly at the very least they didn't make as much money as they were hoping to so you know they got to they got to figure something out and let's be honest there's way more money in the movies than in any of these you know streaming shows so one way or another they want to get to a place where they can release movies again and people will like them you know they like making money so yeah i i think it's a very smart decision to to you know go in in the direction of and this very much seems you know there's been several things this season that seem like they're building towards the the sequels you know, with the First Order, so, yeah, um, you know, yeah, uh, uh, briefly, I can imagine that by the end of this season will be, like, you know, the, the whole thing with Mandalore, I, I can imagine that the, you know, some of the man, yeah, the Mandalorian tribes will have been more or less, re you know, brought back into and maybe the next season cuz there will be at least a fourth season maybe that one will you know maybe we'll get a time skip and then we'll get some stuff that's set either near the end of the sequel trilogy or maybe even slightly after and that will help set up where they're, you know, what they're going to do next with the Star Wars movies. So, yeah. I am really looking forward to the next episode. So, yes, with that, uh, that, that is everything that I had to say about the episode. So, let me know what you thought of it. And, yeah, catch you on the flip side.